to Jeff Gordon. And another mark is put in the record books. Pop the champagne, Jeff Gordon. What a win for Jeff Gordon. You are the damn best. And here comes Jeff Gordon to take the checkered flag. We'll remember the name. Jeff Gordon, winner of the inaugural Brickyard 400. The championship goes to Jeff Gordon. What's up, Jeff Gordon fans? It's one of your own. I think the last time I made a video addressed to you guys was when I was pleading my case for Jeff being a seven-time champion. And uh, I still stand by that even today. I think I pled the case pretty good. And a lot of people, a lot of y'all support me on that. And um, so thank you. Thank you for having supported me when I made that video. I was really nervous. I'd never recorded myself before. So I was. Uh, I did the best I could. So I apologize if it was really crude and uh, didn't really turn out that good. But I did the best I could with it. Now I'm a little bit better at recording. I've recorded quite a few videos before on an alternate channel just for uh, my personal use. And so I've gotten a lot, of bit, a lot more uh, practice than I had before. But this video primarily, I'm not going to waste your time. This video was motiv motivated primarily by me being so psyched that Exalta has decided to make the brilliant move on capitalizing on the nostalgia that they know we're all feeling. We're feeling it. Jeff Gordon's feeling it. It's his final season. As much as it really, really is heart-wrenching to think that these last few races that we're watching him in are his last ones, they realize that in this farewell season, they really need to make the most of it because Jeff's not going to be on the track anymore. So why not make the most of it? So the fact that they're, they are reviving the Rainbow Warrior paint scheme for Bristol is just genius. Now... What I hope, what I think I need to remind them of, and that's why this video is being made, is that that is not the only throwback scheme they need to do. And I looked at the schedule, and I am so happy that Exalta is back on the car for Watkins Glen. I don't know why, I always get a good feeling when Exalta's on that car. And I'm probably biased because last year, three of Jeff's four wins came with Exalta on the car. So Great effort. Jeff Gordon. Off turn for win number 89 for Jeff Gordon by two car lengths over Kevin Harvick. Well, knocking the door and break it down. Mike, you think the man could win 100 races? Didn't know if I'd ever see that or not. That's 89. If I would date was David Pearson with 105, I'd be counting. I'd be worried. Yeah. A lot of seasons best in this finishing order. Jeff Gordon getting the win. Final corners. He won the first one in 1994. 20 years later, he wins the 21st. Checkered flag in the Brickyard 400 to Jeff Gordon. Yeah, buddy. Great We're going to kiss the bricks, boys. Kiss the brick, baby. And the white flag up for Jeff Gordon, who enters his final lap here at Michigan. The value of a team riding momentum and confidence and all believing in each other and pulling the rope in the same direction on display week after week with this 24. Remember, they were dominant last week at Watkins Glen for a while. Had an electrical problem, took him out of the race. They came back and have been so strong here at Michigan today. Checkered flag is up and his third win of the season for the four-time champion, Jeff Gordon. We earned this one, baby. We earned it. And that was an awesome team effort. So proud of you guys. Way to go, man. What a season we're having. Great job, buddy. Thank you. And for that driver, his 91st career victory. Maybe that's why I'm feeling optimistic whenever they're, whenever the car is painted with those awesome flames that we all know and love. But, so Exalta, listen up. Brilliant move, putting the rainbows back on the car for Bristol. I don't know, you probably noticed, but uh, that is just uh, not only just a smart move to appeal to the fans, it's also a smart business decision because... 
I don't know if you looked at it, but I'm sure your rainbow colored die casts are selling like crazy. And I guarantee if you do some more throwback schemes before the end of the year, those die casts too are going to sell like crazy. So don't neglect that. It's good for business. It's not only good to keep the fans happy, to keep Jeff Gordon and his team happy. It's also good from a business standpoint. You'll make a hell a shit ton of money. So, all right, next point. So where I'm going with this, Watkins Glen, keep your paint scheme the same for that race. It's fine. I still love it. So, um, I mean, because honestly, you pick the paint scheme for this year. You deserve to have what you want on the car showcased during the races. I totally understand that. So your original scheme, the black, predominantly black with the flame, should be on the car for Watkins Glen. Now, Bristol, great change up. Glad that the, the rainbow's making a comeback. And at first, I really questioned, like, why the hell is are, is the rainbow going to be on the car for Bristol? Well, as we all know, unfortunately, the season hasn't been really competitive. I think I think the 24 teams maybe built only two cars that have been capable of winning a race, Martinsville and Talladega. So, speed-wise, they just haven't had it. But, seems to me that they've also been competitive at two other tracks, and they just happen to be short tracks. Um two of those being Bristol and Richmond. So now I understand why the Rainbow's going on at Bristol. They finished third there. I th- they, they must really feel that their short their short track program is in order, and that's where they feel they have a best chance of, of uh, the Rainbow Warriors going into victory lane for a final time. So- Jeff Gordon, you know that his tire is a it's white flag for Gordon. One more lap for Jeff, but anything can happen. The 12 car's up in front of him. I think he has a flat tire. Going into turn three, but he's up high on the racetrack. Here comes Jeff off the fourth corner. Is he going to win it? Yes, he will. Jeff Gordon takes the checkered flag and wins it. Gordon takes a look again. The rusty comes down, slams the door. Gordon on ahead. Here comes Jeff Gordon to take the lead. Gordon takes the lead. Rusty slips. Jeff Gordon will win at Bristol, Tennessee. Waller second, Lamonte third. Look at there it is. He is. Look at it, Smith. Everdam is ecstatic. Unbelievable. Here is Jeff Gordon taking the checkered flag and winning his fourth race. Terry Labonte second. Dale Jarrett is third. And with that fourth straight win in this race, he ties Darrell Walter. He won four straight in 81, 82, 83, and 84. Jeff Gordon wins here at Bristol in the Booth City 500. We'll be back to talk with him in just a moment. Definitely a smart move, uh, picking a short track for it. I understand that now. At first, I was wondering, well, why the hell are, aren't they saving that for the finale? But uh, I have a better idea for the finale, and I'll get to that. But my idea was this. So, regular Exalta scheme for Watkins Glen. Rainbow Warrior schemes coming back for Bristol. Awesome idea. Now, here's where I'm going to change it up. I will say this. I think for uh, the Chicagoland race, you need to bring the the other throwback scheme you need to revive are the Flames from 2001. Maybe it's the Flames, Daryl. I think the Flames are working today, boys. His car is red hot, and the rest of them ain't doing any squat. Here to go, bud. Here to go. Nice and smooth, buddy. And here comes Jeff Gordon. For his 53rd career Winston Cup win. <laughs> Gordo's off turn two over there. No way that Gordon or that uh, Jarrett's going to catch him. Jeff Gordon trying to become the second three-time winner of the Winston, joining Dale Earnhardt in leading the league in that category. 95 when he led it all three segments. 97 and 2001. Jeff Gordon is again a champion of NASCAR's All-Star Night. But Jeff Gordon comes off the fourth corner and gets his 54th career victory. Come back on the outside. Oh, oh. there. Rudd just stuck it in too deep at the bottom of turn one, lost the momentum. Gordon got the lead. Rudd's coming back. But that was that, that should have been Rudd's last lap move. All right, we're going to hey. see what happened. One more set of corners down in turn three and four. Man, he was there. That would have been for the win if it was on this lap. If he can get close enough, he might have a shot to try it again. Rudd tries that high well, side. I, I think I think Gordon knows what he's going to do this time. Though. He's going to try to make a run down the hill, Darrell, off turn four. Let's see what happens. He gets the run. Here he comes. He's going to dive to the bottom. Gordon to block. And Gordon to win. He holds off Ricky Rudd. Wow. Marlon Mayfield and Ethan for fifth. But Hutt Strickland finished sixth. What a run. 
Ryan Newman field. Sorry to put you through all that work. That's one hunter. Jeff Craven, get that flag. That is 100 Winston yeah, Cup wins for car owner Rick Hendrick. Uh, and in a very short period of time. Just like this young man right here. That's his 55th Winston Cup win in a very short, short period, period of time. time. The car not very good in the opening part of the race. The crew kept working, working, got the strategy right, got the chassis right. And now Jeff Gordon is one corner away from a Brickyard 400 win. The last three straight years, the winner of this race has gone on to be the NASCAR Winston Cup Series champion. Jeff Gordon, the point leader, comes off the corner and becomes a three-time winner of the Brickyard 400 at Indianapolis. Gordon has done it again. But here comes the road course king, Jeff Gordon. Second win in a row, and he takes his seventh road course victory, winning here at Watkins Glen. There you go, Jeff Gordon. That's the way to do it. He's learning. <laughs> <laughs> He thought he'd do it over the backstretch where no one could see him. He's got it down now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Atta boy, Jeff. Jeff. Kevin Harvick and Jeff Gordon are on the same radio show Monday night, my radio show, and Kevin told him how to do it. Inaugural races have been very, very good for Jeff Gordon. He won at Indianapolis in the first race there. He won at California the first race there. Here he comes to the checkered flag. Gordon awesome. wins in Kansas City. Sixth time in 2001, Jeff Gordon is your winner. Ooh, Rusty didn't get off a two at all that time. Here comes Gordon, right up against the back bumper. Everybody in the crowd on their feet. Go. Slow the traffic, I think, caused that right there. Here comes Gordon right up to the bumper again. Did you hear that wheel spin, Ben? Yeah, I did hear that wheel spin. <laughs> the bump and run. There it is. Gordon underneath to the lead. Two laps to go. Can Rusty come back? <laughs> Jeff better hope not. <laughs> 31 races since Jeff Gordon has been to victory lane. The much publicized dry spell could come to a close in one more lap around the Bristol half mile. He dominated the opening part of the race, got caught batting back in traffic after a late pit stop, but the bump and run is going to get Jeff Gordon the checkered flag at the end of the windless streak. Gordon wins the Sharpie 500 at Bristol. And the other angle to this is points. You know, Robbie Loomis, Jeff Gordon's crew chief, told me that before he left the Hendrick Motorsports shop to come to this race, he went into the museum and looked yeah, at the trophy. Like one, looked at the trophy that you get for winning here at Bristol. He said, I want one of those, and I want it this weekend. Marty? Well, Robbie, it's been a long time coming for you guys, and you did not give up this entire season or tonight. I tell you what, you know, Jeff Gordon's been through so much, and it's just exciting for this team to win the night race. We've never won it. I mean, I can't say how much it just means. It's, you know, we talked last week, all we need is to get a little momentum. That dude smoke off it. He loves the night race, baby. He's going to wreck. He just did. That's very nice burnout. We're loving it. Thank you, guys. No, all right. This team heads to victory lane for the first time in a long, long time, Alan. Jeff Gordon's fourth instance in which he scored the most points over an entire season. That paint scheme needs to be revived for Chicagoland. And I know y'all are sponsoring Texas, but in Texas, I, for some reason, I just don't have a good feeling about that race. Chicagoland, I think Jeff likes that track better. So I think there's a better chance of not just putting the flames on the car and it looking really fantastic. And again, selling a shit ton of merchandise, getting the fans excited again. But... I think Jeff will like the fact that he's having a great scheme being put on his car at a track that he's competitive at. So I think it's important to also time it right. You, we need to do these throwback schemes at racetracks that we know Jeff can be good at. So 
not Texas, scratch Texas. I think um, y'all's great original scheme should stay on the car for Texas. That's fine. But I think the Flames from 2001 need to make a comeback for the Chicagoland race. That's my idea, and I'm sticking to it. I think it's a great suggestion. I would most definitely capitalize on it because, again, Exalta, this is Jeff's last year. We really should be making the most of it. You really need to take advantage of the fact that this is the last time you're going to be able to do this with him, so make the most of it. Now, my last great idea. This is where you all really need to listen to me. So what I'm going to put up here for you is a picture of of I believe I don't I don't know why y'all didn't run this scheme back in 2012. It was um, when y'all were were originally Dupont, and you were celebrating your 20th anniversary, and uh, the paint scheme. As you're looking at it here, I mean, look at that. That is a, a collage of every classic paint scheme that Jeff ever had on his car, going all the way to um, going all the way to what the scheme is now. Just a blending of all of those. Look at that. That is perfect. That is the greatest paint job I've ever seen. And I know it was supposed to be run at Homestead in 2012, and you went with this silver look instead, which wasn't bad, but the silver car compared to this car I'm looking at right here that we're all looking at right now, there's no comparison. The car that should have been run is infinitely better. The one we're looking at right here, this is what should have been run in that race. But it's okay. It's okay. You didn't run it then because I'm sure you're saving this this awesome idea, this awesome looking car for Jeff's final race at Homestead. This is when this scheme needs to be run. Seriously, his final race, Exalta, please, 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 I am begging you. And fans, all of you fellow fans listening to this, I mean, flood this video everywhere. Twitter, Facebook, any social media you know. I mean, spam it all over the place. Hell, if I have to make a petition on this, I will. But Exalta, please listen to us, all right? Please run this paint scheme that I'm showing you right here in this video. Take a close look at this picture. This is the scheme you need to run at Homestead. Jeff's final race needs to be in a car that is painted exactly like this. This will be an epic win for y'all. I promise it'll be a win for you. It'll be a win for Jeff. It'll be a win for the fans. I mean, I would love it to be a literal win where he's going for... I mean, I... I I honestly abhor the chase. I always will. But hell, if it exists, he might as well go for it. So he's in the finale. He's going for the chase. And if he's in that final race and he's eligible, like, imagine him winning it in a car that looks that spectacular. I mean, this can only go perfectly. All right? And imagine when he wins the whole thing. Can, there will be no celebration that equals what you will see if Jeff wins the chase in his final year. It will look like what it will look like what happened when Earnhardt finally won the Daytona 500 after so many tries. There will be crew members lined up the length of pit road, high fiving Jeff as he drives down pit road. NASCAR, if you're watching this, keep this in mind. If you want a story that will reverberate for time immemorial, just imagine that image. If Jeff wins it all, that will be the most popular, emotional, feel good tear-jerking story ever. I mean, imagine Jeff and, and his family just embracing each other in victory lane, winning the race, winning the chase, just sobbing with joy. I mean, th this will be talked about forever. So, like, let's make it happen, people. I mean, him winning it all in a car that looks this good, Exalta, please, please do us a favor, do Jeff a favor, do yourselves a favor, and paint this car for Homestead. Please use this paint scheme for that final race. And NASCAR, listen. You cannot afford a season in which Jeff does not win a race, or and, and worse, does not win the chase. It can. This is the best story you can possibly have, is Jeff winning the chase his last year and going out on top. It, I promise you there will be no more popular outcome than that. All right, so Exalta, please listen. Paint the flames from 2001 on the car for the race in Chicagoland. And lastly, the last throwback scheme you need to do is the one you're looking at here, a collage of every old paint scheme Jeff ever, ever had on his car for Homestead. 
Please make it happen. And fans, I, I have no doubt that they didn't intend, Exalted didn't intend to put the rainbow scheme on the car until Joey, until Joey, a good friend of mine on here, uh, started a petition and got everyone behind him saying, please put the rainbow scheme back on the car. That got media attention. We can get media attention with this video. So please, if we get enough people behind this, they'll notice again and they will listen and make this happen. So fans, please back me up on this. Exalta, please support this idea. And Jeff, if you like the idea, please talk to your sponsor and encourage them to make this happen too. It can only go well for you and for NASCAR and for everybody. So hope you like this idea, guys. And again, I'm going to need your help in making this go viral. Please, I know it's cliche. It seems like almost everyone these days is like, help this go viral, help this go viral. All right, I know you've heard this from everybody, but this truly is a one, this is a cause worth rallying around, and there is well over a million of us, you know, not just on social media. I mean, the world, the world over, there are millions of us, tens of millions of us, I promise. So if we all unified and band together and shared this thing, we could get an awesome treat at Chicagoland and at Homestead. So let's help each other out on this and let's make it happen. So here's to that idea. And also, most importantly, let's, um, Jeff, okay, if you're not doing it for yourself or your or for your fans, um, do it for your family, okay? Because th there's, um, there's a video out there uh, of your kids and they're the age now where they they understand the significance and the joy of what it's like when you win. So, I mean, I know it's your last year, and I don't know if you're coasting through it or whatnot. I hope your heart's still in it 100%. You deserve it to your, you you deserve it for yourself and for your fans to be giving it your best. So you better be driving your ass off, giving it your best for us, okay? Because there's a lot of us put a lot of money into going to watch you race, and you better be driving it for all you're worth. But if you're not, I don't know why you wouldn't be, but if you're not, I mean, your kids are there, and they want to see you succeed. I mean, there was, like, video of Ella during the Daytona 500, and she's screaming, come on, Papa, I want you to win. I mean, she's, like, echoing the same sentiment we all have. We want you to win. We don't spend money to go to the track. We don't put aside three to four hours of our day watching the race broadcast to watch you finish 10th to 15th. That's not why we show up to the track. Jeff, we show up to watch you win. Okay? That's why we invest our time is to see you win. So, come on, man. Come on, Papa. I want him to win. Me too. We know you can win. You've got a great team behind you. You're a fantastic driver. Well, you remember what Ray said last year, being with Jeff Gordon is like winning the lottery. There's no reason drivers like Truex and Kurt Busch and Kenseth should be winning races before you do. I mean, Truex in the 78 Furniture Row car has won a race before you have. I mean, Jeff, wake up call, dude. You have a winning team. You have a winning team. You guys need to win before the chase starts. Do not get comfortable with this point lead you have and think, oh, we're just going to coast in. It is not enough. I'll, I'll be frank with you. It's not, not enough for me, and I don't think it's enough for the fans, the honest ones, to think that we're just satisfied with you coasting into the chase. That's not what we want. We want you winning going into the chase, okay? I don't want another Rusty Wallace kind of outcome where it's like, oh, yeah, I was happy just to make the chase even though I wasn't really competitive. No, you need to be in the chase because you're there to win it, not to be a field filler. You need to be in the chase because you know you have the team that can win it. And frankly, if you can't win a race before the chase, I mean, I know Tony Stewart shocked the hell out of all of us in 2011. But look, I, it's my contention, if you can't win a race before the chase, you don't deserve to be in it. So Jeff, win a race before the chase. And preferably, you know, if you only win one race before the chase... Make it Bristol, okay, so we can at least see you win in the rainbow-colored car, all right? Come on, the Rainbow Warriors, y'all need to be in victory lane one last time. So if it's just going to be one race you win prior to the chase, make it that one. That would be fantastic. So anyway, that's all I've got to say on the matter. So Jeff, please win. This is your last year to make it happen. 
Hell, you could shock us all. If Tony Stewart can win five out of ten races in the chase, and you're an infinitely better driver than him. Hell, you could win every single race in there. You could still win eight races before the end of the year and get to 100. Why not? Dream big. There's, there's, there's nothing that is impossible for you, okay? You can win races, all right? You can win. You can still win. Believe it. I know you can do it, Jeff. I know your team can do it. And fans, we need to believe that this is still possible. That Jeff can win. He can will win a hell of a lot of races and win this damn chase once and for all just to say that you did it. I mean, it's a stupid format, and I, I can't stand this concoction. But at least just be able to say you won the damn thing and be done with it. So that's all I've got to say. And thanks for listening. And again, please help this go viral so that Exalta... Please give us some more awesome throwbacks near the end of the year at Chicagoland and at Homestead. So, thanks again for listening. Follow Jeff Gordon fans. Let's uh, let's root for Jeff, and hopefully he'll surprise us before Bristol and uh, pull off a win at uh, Watkins Glen. He is the road course king after all. So, Jeff, live up to your title. You're the road course king, so you dominated there last year. Let's get us a win this year. Later. Comes to the stripe and clinches the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship for 1998. I've been around a good long while, and this kid is dominating right now. He's just awesome. What the 24 car is doing is extraordinary. Jeff Gordon is an awesome race driver. Maybe he's just better. I don't know. The 24 bugs stepped on it. They still got it, I tell you. I'm looking in the mirror. Here he comes. Got to give him credit. They get the job done. I mean, those guys, they do it. I mean, I don't know. I know how, but they just do it. I don't know. Jeff Gordon may win them all. And at just 27 years of age, how many more titles are ahead? The season is over. We'll see you in Daytona.